this video I'm going to quickly show you how to make a box plot in R. So first we need a numerical variable. So let's keep using the speed data that we had from our cars. So here was the variable speed. It came from the data set cars. Okay. We did some numerical summaries like the mean and the median and the mode. Okay. Yeah, sorry, and the quartiles. So let's quickly summarize what we did. Okay, now basically this summary output is really uh, similar to the information that the box plot is going to show us. Uh, in the sense that it's going to depict the median, the first and the third quartile, and the max and the min, possibly, depending on the type of box plot. So let's just see what it's drawn for us. So by default, R is going to create this vertically. I don't like it vertically. So first thing I want to change is make it horizontal. Okay. All right, I like it this way. So here is the range of our values. Here we see Q1, Q3. This is the median or Q2. So this is a fairly symmetric variable. You can see this tail is a little longer. The median is a little bit shifted okay, to the, to the lower end of this range, but I wouldn't read too much into that. We'll also look at the histogram of this in a moment. Here are the whiskers, and typically the whiskers are drawn at 1.5 interquartile range. So anything outside of 1.5 IQR would show up as a dot. So this, is, this might not be the best example. So let's take a variable that maybe has some more. I have another variable more extreme values called dist. Here we go. We have something here. So let's focus on distance. A distance is the distance it takes to stop at uh, a car. So at certain speeds. So that's all we really need to know. It's numerical. So here we go. We have Q1, Q3. We see a very uh, a different distribution here in Q2. We see uh, what would look like, I bet if we looked at the histogram, uh, slightly a right skewed or positive skew. So typically how these plots are drawn, and once again there are many ways to draw these, uh, is this part is exactly how I've described it. As far as the whiskers, typically any observation that is in excess of one and a half interquartile ranges, so remember that's the distance from Q1 to Q3. So more than one and a half interquartile ranges above or below will fall outside of these whiskers and will show up as a point or a dot. And there are various symbols that are used to depict values that are, let's say, more than three interquartile ranges away, and so on and so forth. But that will vary slightly from package to package. Here, what's important to notice is that this guy is possibly an outlier okay for all intents and purposes that guy is an extreme value okay that we might want to look into um, everything else fell into this kind of uh, the box or and or the whisker or the whisker I should say okay the whiskers all right so let's actually so see how this gives us a sense of the distribution of our variable by comparing this or looking at this side by side with the histogram for the same variable. So here's, here we see what we kind of expected, which was a positively skewed distribution. Right? There's a kind of a peak here and then a quick drop off a drop off, I should say, rather slow drop off, but that continues way out into the high end of, of the range with the frequencies decreasing as we get further out. And that's the same picture that is depicted 
down here with this box and whisker. We have a longer right tail, a shorter left tail, so more data is crammed in a tighter space, hence the height of these bars are taller. So that's how these two things, you can connect these two ideas. So once again, if this is Q1 and this is Q2, that's saying that 25% of the data is cramped in this space. Here's Q3. 25 is cramped in this space. That adds up to 50% overall in this box. But you see, for example, that this 25 is cramped in a tighter space than this 25. That indicates to me that the histogram at this range, from here to here, will be taller than here because the same amount of data is crammed into a tighter range. And then we know that from Q3 on up here to the max, this is the max, we have 25%. And then from Q1 down to the min, we have 25%. And this should all add up to 100%. But look at how this 25% is spread across such a lot wider range than this 25%. So this clearly, all this tells me that this is a positively skewed distribution. Let me get rid of all of my annotations and let's look at it again, okay? And so you could see here that this variable is positively or right skewed as opposed to uh, something that, let's pull up, a variable that I was working with earlier today which was very symmetric if we take a look at this histogram we see something very symmetric and if we look at the box plot corresponding to this guy um, let's keep x1 was just a variable I created earlier today and I used to uh, show a normal distribution so here we see the box plot for X1, which is very symmetric. And a moment ago, you saw the histogram was very symmetric. You see here we have equal length whiskers. In fact, if we go all the way out to the max, it's very equal in length. The median is almost dead center of the, of the um, interquartile range. So this is very symmetric, okay, as opposed to what we saw before, which was slightly positively skewed, okay? Uh, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, want to keep these short and sweet and show you how to create a box plot and also how that relates to a histogram and how it reveals to you the distribution of a numerical variable. Especially useful when you don't have a lot of data and a histogram becomes a, 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 not, a, a very blocky looking um, chart. The box plot is a great alternative. Um, but in any case, both would be better than uh, just one, okay? So, hope this was helpful. Uh, make sure to watch all the other tutorials on this playlist and on the channel. Subscribe and have a great day.